Hi, it's Karen from Port Prep. And today I want to talk to you about architecture portfolios. So I have a lot of students that are dreaming of going to Ryerson Architectural uh, Science, uh, Carleton Architecture, Waterloo. Those three schools, I get asked for help a lot. Now the advice I'm about to give you definitely is targeted to those schools, but this information would help anybody applying to an architecture program anywhere. Uh, but I'm gonna focus on those schools because I get asked about those ones so much. Um, so first of all, they're, they're quite competitive, but you're gonna have 1,000, 2,000 applicants each year applying, it varies. And the amount of spots they have is limited. Um, in some programs, it's 75. In others, I think it's about 126, something like that. Like the classes are pretty small. So that means it's really competitive. It's oftentimes uh, as competitive as getting into a school like Harvard. Um, you know, it, it doesn't have quite maybe that same prestige, but it's just as challenging. It means you have to have a high average and you have to have some really creative, interesting work in your portfolio. Um, there's a few different ways that Ryerson versus Carleton or Waterloo evaluates their students. Um, and so if you're applying to a school that I'm not talking about, find out about those specific schools and what they tend to look for and get that advice. Go to the college university tours talk to profs, reach out to the profs and the coordinators, reach out to other students that have been accepted, and they try to get some insights. So here's a bit of a summary um, that I can tell you about with the schools that I work with a lot. Um, so now let's start with Waterloo. Waterloo is really well sought after, not just because the university is really, um, really prestigious and, and well thought of among anybody that wants to study in the sciences, engineering, mathematics, um, and architecture as well. Um, so a lot of the advice I'm gonna give you from Waterloo, you can apply to Carleton and Ryerson or any other school as well. This is just specific to what I've learned about Waterloo. Um, so in the best, Thing to do for Waterloo is to go to their open house events and any opportunity you can go and share with them and see what they're doing. Um, they do not really want their students to be coached per se um, in their portfolio. They really want to know who you are and that you did this work. So if you're going to reach out for any help at all, the help should be of the nature of just learning some skills. And when you're developing your creative ideas, whoever you're talking with as a mentor, or whatever, please make sure you tell your mentor, I really just want you to, to maybe give me some input or push me to make stronger ideas of my own. Please don't feed me with ideas. I really got to find out who I am creatively and show that to Waterloo because the profs there are of the mind that they can tell whether you've been coached or not. I don't know if that's true or not, but just to, to know that that's true. And if you are getting help from somebody, don't tell them you did, right? You, you want to just be yourself and show that. And so some of the things that Waterloo looks for and what's unique about Waterloo um, is that they have uh, several ways to look at an applicant. And the big thing they do that's different from the other schools is that they have a um, portfolio interview. So that's almost like a performance or an installation art um, project. So this is a great chance to shine. Um, so and people do all kinds of different things. So they really wanna know who you are as a creative person. So that means you, if you play violin, uh, or sing or dance or any of those things or like to act or orate, you can bring that into your architecture portfolio interview um, and really show them who you are. Um, 
make a sculpture, make a, a light show, um, do something really inventive and it, with a little bit of sense performance, perhaps, if, if that's what you're good at. Now, don't be who you are not, be who you are. And so the next thing that whatever that presentation is going to be, you know, obviously you'll have your portfolio, you might have some kind of model or sculptural thing or demonstration or slideshow, whatever you're going to do to present to them um, visually. Uh, make sure you're well practiced when you do that. So do practice mock-up presentations to people you know and trust. So find some people in architecture, in education, uh, in design that, that, um, that you respect and that you could do this mock presentation to, maybe a teacher at school, um, but a couple of them, not just one, because they usually have about four professors um, in the room and you're gonna present to them. Um, so now, as you're doing that, um, one of the things you wanna convey to them is that you are a whole person, you are a worldly person. Um, like get outside of your town, and look around out there. So I was talking to one of my recent students who got accepted into Ryerson Architecture, and he said, he thought it really helped him that he kind of stopped for a bit and traveled and went to all kinds of different places where the culture and the way they built for their culture was very different in place to place. So that helped him really have a more worldly view and he got out of his city and his culture. So now if traveling isn't an option for you right now in your life, travel by watching shows, reading books, looking at magazines, going to different areas of your city that have different cultural components than what you're used to. Get out of your smaller worldview and become well-read. They don't want that you're only breathing and living architecture. They want to see the whole person you are. Um, so they would like to see what you care about in life. Like, why do you want to be an architect? And what problems for society, for the planet, for people, um, or whatever area of design you think you might be interested in, show us some solutions that have ingenuity and that when you share, you show you care, care about humanity, care about the earth, care about the issues that face us um, and show us some solutions. So architects are problem solvers and for humanity and the planet and whatever is facing us at a particular place and time or culture. So think about what that might be and maybe design, maybe something architectural, maybe something furniture based, maybe something more um, display or performance based. Um, it's just something that looks at whatever the problem is that you want to show, shine a light on, bring some awareness to. So maybe it's an architectural design and then it would be good to build a model of some kind it would be good to do some concept sketches of why that matters to you, what are some of your ideas, your thought process, show us some perspective sketches and drawings. And you know what's really great? If you can take that project and explore those ideas as a theme in your portfolio, or at least a section of your portfolio. So that could mean Maybe there's something you really care about in society and you want to shine a light on it. So you could take a bunch of photographs, your own photographs, and um, show us, bring us into the emotion of this problem. Show it to us, like a photojournalistic essay, or make a painting about it, or sculpture, or a collage. Um, and while you're making those pieces, really push yourself to be very artistic and creative, expressive, and get outside of just being like a controlled designer type. Show them a bit of your creative and emotional self. Um, so now, if you do that for Waterloo, you can equally take that same idea, that same realm, and apply that to Ryerson or Carlton. 
um, or any other architecture school you want to apply to. Um, now, when it comes to, say, Ryerson, um, they would like, they're, they're fairly open-ended. You can read their, their portfolio requirements. They're going to want to see a range of skills. All the schools are going to want to see a range of skills. Like you know how to draw, say, from life. Uh, so learn how to draw. If you don't know how to draw, learn how to draw at least a little bit of what you see. Study mostly like geometric objects. You know, how do I draw a cylinder? How do I draw a cube? Um, how do I draw a cone? These are the building blocks of structure. And if you can draw just small, simple objects, you know, like I've got this, this candle here, if you can understand how to draw that in this truncated part here versus the, the flat bottom and the round of this, um, you know, that helps you know to design and draw your ideas out of your imagination if you understand how to draw structure. So, um, so take some still life drawing courses or something and learn how to draw. Include some sketches um, of geometric type objects, maybe a still life, but you don't know, just throw random objects together and have it not mean anything. Whenever you draw anything, express an emotion, an idea, hint at a story. These objects belong to a place and a time and a person and, and some kind of problem. Like, like um, Another great art, art prof, Clara Liu from RISD, Rhode Island School of Art and Design, she said, I don't care how well you can draw the pine cone. She just picked a random big pine cone. You know, it, it could be like exceptionally wonderful. And, and exact, you know, but she doesn't care. She wants to know what you feel about the pine cone. What do you think about the pine cone? Show us something, make us look in a different way. We're not cameras, we're people. We have ideas, we have emotions, right? And we can make our viewers feel something and think something. So every time you show a skill, like I can draw a still life, I can draw a perspective, I could do a painting, um, I can take a photo, I can build something out of clay or wood. Anytime you're making something and showing a skill, and we want those skills, we want to see that you can draw from vision, that you understand perspective, that you understand design and color and the, um, the two-dimensional design surface, like something graphic-based or photographic, uh, right? Show us that you have all that range of skill, um, but always have that skill be in the service of an idea. So, because architects are ideas people, problem solving people, right? So that's what you wanna show in everything you do. Don't just show us some random perspective. Try to show us something with a little meaning um, or feeling, okay? So, um, so for Ryerson, you know, like I was going to say, they, they want that range of skills. And in that range of skills, and this is true for all architecture or any design program, show your an idea or at least one project that's really full. Like I was just saying for Waterloo, oh, I have this idea. Great. Where did the idea come from? What was I looking at? So what are my influences? Um, show some early little sketches and thoughts, ideas, rough little sketches, words, mind maps, any of that. Um, show us an evolution, like you've done a few thumbnail sketches, uh, like small sketches, and then you've taken your favorite idea and you've developed it and you've sketched it a few times and make what's called concept sketch or concept board. Um, that can be images and sketches. Look for examples of how architects do that. They're loose freehand sketches with um, felt tip pens, usually a little bit of marker, something kind of loose, just exploring ideas. Then you would take one of those ideas and say, now let's let's work that out some more. So maybe you'll do an exonometric drawing, a 3D model, a uh, perspective drawing or two with some color added or some value changes like maybe just a grayscale marker rendering. Um, then um, build a model 
um, or make a 3D model or make a video or something that uh, takes the idea from so if you're going from the beginning stage through the conceptual, the design process and development through to the final stage. Uh, now, if you've done anything, you've already designed and built something of any kind, show us that too. Show us your accomplishments, right? Um, show us what's really outstanding and really cool about you. Maybe you've done some robotic stuff. Like, show us that. That's all really interesting. Um, so, as you're making at least this one fully developed piece, the other pieces should have an area that's um, kind of more graphic based. Show them your design sets. So, it could be graphics or collage. Um, very simple, clean, minimalist artworks that show a sense of design. So in making those, study the design principles and elements of design. So find out what those are and study them. Study a bit of color theory, simultaneous contrast. What is that? The 12 laws of simultaneous contrast. It's great as an architect and designer to have some sense of color, not just form. Um, and so as you're studying these principles of design, make a piece about them. And each time you say, you know, this might be a fun way to do a portfolio. You're going to do one piece for each principle of design. One might be a photo, one might be a painting, one might be a sketch. Another might be something 3D that you make out of paper um, or clay or wood so that you can really show the diversity in your understanding of design and you're educating yourself at the same time, which prepares you for school. Because basically, your portfolio is showing them not just that you're a problem solver, not just that you have the skills, um, and not just that you have the ideas. Like all of that is showing that you are ready to be educated in their program. So you need to get yourself ready, which means you need to learn how to draw in various ways. You need to learn how to think through the design process. What is that? How do you do that? How do you come up with a good idea? How do you evolve an idea? How do you refine an idea? And how do you present the idea? You need to find the training for all those steps and aspects of design and showing a design. So, that means that you're going to need to find some education to get you to that place. That's one of the things I want to talk to you about today. I want to finish talking about each school, though, that I tend to help people with. So Ryerson, like we're saying, you're going to show those range of skills. You're going to do that for any architecture program. The other thing that you have to do for Ryerson is you're going to be doing a sketch test and a home creativity test. And the sketch test will vary every year. It usually has something to do with draw something from vision um, and then change it, manipulate it somehow. Or here's one angle of view of this thing, whatever it is, let's show you a photograph. Now draw it from the inside, or here's the inside view, draw it from the outside. Um, here's this point of view, draw it from down below. Now do some design change to it. It tends to be things like that. It's different every year. So you don't know until they post what it's going to be or when you apply, you'll find out. So that's something to practice for. And so obviously you're gonna be learning different ways to draw, developing your spatial awareness and practicing that kind of thing. Now I have ways to help people prepare that. I have like a little uh, sort of, I don't know, like a mock test for Ryerson that helps you practice drawing from different points of view to test your spatial awareness. Um, the other thing you have to do is this creativity test, which in the last couple of years is a relatively new thing they've started. I really love it. I think it's a brilliant idea that they're doing this. They tell you to have an 11 by 17 tabloid piece of paper, and you have to manipulate that piece of paper to become some kind of 3D form, and you can do whatever you want, representational, sculptural, architectural, design-based, anything, anything, you decide. And you can tape and you can fold and you can glue and you can paper clip, um, whatever you want. Um, so 
but I really recommend that you play a lot with that before you bring it and you bring the 3D thing with you. That's an important thing to, to note. It's not photographs of it, you're bringing the actual thing. So find a way to safely transport it there. Um, and uh, so what I really encourage you that when you're making that, you try to keep the joinery of tape and staples to the minimum and really think about the structural integrity and the design principles of that piece. Um, have the way it's attached be really purposeful and part of the design, not just this afterthought. Really show that you're a designer. So if you can use paper clips, you know, maybe use them in a clever way, you know? Um, but remember the paper is the star. And if you could make it obvious that it's paper going through a process of different sorts, like think about all the ways you can manipulate paper to become a 3D form. Okay, so that's something to have fun with. Um, now, next thing. Let's move on to Carleton. Carleton is an exciting school to apply for. It's in Ottawa, beautiful city, excellent program, um, and it's really creative. And something I love about what they do, and I highly recommend, even if you don't feel like moving to Ottawa, and maybe you don't really want to go to Carleton, you know, it's an excellent school, and I encourage you to consider it. Um, you know, it's a great idea to, to take what they're asking for either this academic year or in past academic years and use them as a jumping off point. So Carleton will each year, you know, they want to see the range of skills just like any school and you can put whatever stuff you want in your portfolio as your three choice pieces and they ask for four creativity prompts and they're always so interesting. Um, like when you're they were asking themes about what does it mean to draw? What does it mean to I guess, make an image? Um, another year, um, oh, they were so cool, they're so philosophical. Uh, they said, oh, make a piece. And this can be absolutely anything you want, any piece. So they, painting or sculpture or architectural design, absolutely anything you want. Um, and so the, uh, one of the prompts was make a piece about how the line became a space. Another cool one. The space that inhabits the space between. What would you make with that? Like, just think about that, right? Um, so they're always really interesting things. And what you can find is that those creativity prompts for Carlton, you might say, hey, that's kind of cool. I made this neat piece, but that gives me an idea for something I could do for Water U in this bigger, bolder, you know, performance-based or installation-based way or something. Um, so you can let the ideas from Carlton that really push you to be creative and philosophical and say, what could you do in your Ryerson portfolio with that or Waterloo or whatever other schools you're applying for? Um, and um, so I highly recommend you, you just look at those and just try them on anyway, um, just because they make you think and push you to go way farther than you ever imagined you would. I've seen some incredible things that students come up with because of Carlton's creativity prompts. Um, so I think that's most of my advice as far as, you know, in general about those schools and architecture portfolios. And um, what I'm going to do, um, I'll make another video about how can an architecture student prepare themselves. Um, for making the portfolio um, because it is um, quite a big undertaking that a lot of students kind of underestimate. Uh, every student I know have said it's so stressful, it's so much work, it takes months to do a really good portfolio and it can cost a bit of money too. It really depends on how you do it 
and who you are and what resources you have around you. But you know, you do have to be prepared to take this very seriously. No matter how talented you are, it's still a significant amount of work and you've got to get the learning one way or another. So that's something I'm gonna post for um, and give you some ideas about um, in, within I think the next week. Uh, I'll make sure that you have some advice about that. But just before I go, if you're kind of concerned saying, oh, that all sounds cool, but I don't know how to do that. Um, if you want some help, reach out to me at Port Prep. We give free portfolio assessments. You might want to get one this summer to help you kind of prepare for next fall when you're going to really start working on it. Um, but you also might want to sign up for our architecture and design summer camp. It starts um, August 7th. It runs for two weeks. And um, I walk the students through sort of the design drawing and the design thinking process um, and how to draw that and how to build things three-dimensionally and just some general advice about portfolios. We get to talk to students who've made portfolios before and got accepted and really get some great insights. Um, so there's lots of ways to learn. We'll talk more about the education path another time. And so thanks for tuning in. If you have questions, I want to know what they are. Please make a comment below, and I will do my best to um, to answer you and get back to you. Um, you can email me as well, either off the website portprep.com, um, or you can reach out to me on Gmail. And I'm at portprep1 at gmail.com. Email me your questions, things you're wondering about. I want to answer your questions. And your question is going to be somebody else's question. So please don't be shy. You go on and use whatever resources there are to motivate you and encourage you and teach you the skills you need to develop your ideas and your vision for the future of humanity the way we live. Okay? So good luck to you. Uh, I believe in you. And you know what? Frankly, our earth needs new problem solvers with everything that's going on. We need you guys to apply and start making, building the world in a better way. Bye for now. I'm Karen.